Hello fellow alchemists, welcome back to our series on Phoenix Live View and also some upcoming things within Phoenix itself. Now I left off uh, not showing you one of the sections of the Phoenix Live View dashboard, it's because I needed to take a look at it myself. Um, I got a little bit of an introduction uh, and it's really based on running off of some telemetry events. Now telemetry is kind of a new thing for me. I haven't really had a moment to really get into it, um, but I'm planning to do some more. But I thought, okay, let's go ahead and let's show you some simple uh, events you can start to model within your app. And um, from there, I think I would like to do a little bit more in-depth video about telemetry. Um, but in any case, I just want to start to show you what you can start to show within your Live View dashboard. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, the first thing is you're gonna to have to add a couple of, of dependencies and that's telemetry polar telemetry polar and that should be around version 0 0.4 and finally we need to add in telemetry metrics and it's the same thing around 0 0.4 Now, Polar is going to be doing some polling of some events at a periodic time. We won't be using that today, but I'd like to do something with that later. <coughs> Excuse me. Telemetry metrics is going to be a simple way that you can start to take some telemetry events and start to show some data. So, of course, we need to do our mixed steps get. And you can see we already have telemetry metrics, but we didn't have the polar. Now, the next thing to do is we need to actually create a telemetry uh, module, which we use to start showing some data. So for this one, I'm gonna to start to show um, some data about, about our Phoenix app. So I'm gonna put this into the web section. So make a telemetry.ex file. And we're going to find Hello, live view web telemetry. And for this one, I'm going to create this as a supervisor module. And you'll see that one later. And in this case, we're going to import the telemetry metrics code into here. So that way we can start to use some of those very easy uh, modules. So I'm going to define the start link because it's going to be in our supervision tree. Take some argument, we don't really care about that. And we're going to use the supervisor dot start link function, which of course is going to be our current module. We pass in the argument, and the name will be our current module. And we need to define an init. And that's going to be our arg from over here. Like I said, we don't really need that, so it's fine. Uh, what we can do is we can start to just set up our, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some children over here and just go ahead and commit those children. In this case, we don't have any children. And I'm going to choose a strategy of one for one, so we'll just keep it going. Let me just format that, it looks a little bit nicer. And finally, I'm going to start to define some metrics that we actually care about. Now, some quite useful metrics, and we're going to use a summary in here. So summary is going to come from our telemetry metrics. And I'm going to say, I want to see the Phoenix endpoint stop duration. So whenever the whenever the endpoint stops processing, just give me the duration. So how much time was spent. And I can put that into 
millisecond. Because it's quite it goes quite fast, right? And we can also summarize um, some more interesting things. Also, which paths were actually done. So in this case, we'll do the same metric. Quest path. So this will actually show where they actually came from. Like which route they're going to. Some values. So what we can do is we can create a function in order to extract all that. So tag method and request path. Let's pass that in. And it will stay the same. Native millisecond. Format that again. Now what you're going to get in here is basically the uh, metadata. And on this metadata, we happen to also get the cons, so we can easily rip out some data. So I'm going to make this function over here. So I need to actually pass that in using the style. So we're going to get the metadata. Now from the metadata, what we can do is we can take metadata we can take the method and the request path. This is just one line. I'm just going to do it like this. Like that. So this would be quite interesting stuff. Um, now the other thing that we can also do is we can also get some database metrics, which could be quite interesting. So for instance, we can get a summary of our database like how long it takes to do some queries, things like that. So because our app is Hello Live View, so we have to do this Hello Live View repo query, and then there's going to be something with the total time we can take a look at. Uh, we need to say what kind of unit we want that in. And it could be native and in milliseconds. Uh, we can also care about, you know, the actual query time itself. Hello, live view. Basically, grab all of this. Query, and then there's the query time. Of course, we could just grab this too. Um, and for instance, you can also take a look at the decode time. But uh, I don't think it's super important. I just want to get a couple of metrics in here. These I think are probably most important. See how long it takes and see uh, the total time it takes. And we can also get some information. Sorry, make sure the commas. This is a list. Now we can also get some information about, say, the VM's memory total. That should be in bytes low bytes because our app is going to be quite small and we can also get say the CPU or IO so we can grab TP VM total run view and of course the IO. So this should be enough to start to get us some information about what, we're, what we could be interested in. So I'm going to go ahead and start this up. Um, but we do need to do two more things. One is to actually add this to our supervision tree. So of course we just copy this name and we go to our app. 
And I'm just going to start this up just before we get to here. Before we get to the endpoint, so we can start getting some information about the endpoint from the very beginning, of course. Um, and then we finally need to go to the router. And we need to actually tell it, hey, check out metrics from this module over here. So what we do is we grab this. And we go to the router. And on the route, we say, OK, for the metrics, use this module. Now we start up our application. Okay, we go to here. OK, not so interesting. But what we can do is we can go to our dashboard. And you see our metric section is now showing. And we see we have our different sections we can check out. So for instance, we could take a look at what's the current memory. This should be populated. There we go. So we can see how much our memory is. This is in kilobytes. CPU, nothing's really going on, so not a big deal. I.O., nothing going on either. Um, but this kind of stuff. So we can refresh this a couple times. You should see some I.O. shooting out. Maybe not yet, but it seems it's quite not very useful, but this one you can see pops up, right? Now the Phoenix metrics is quite interesting because we can start to see, you know, where people are going. So if I go here a couple times here, you'll see these things start to pop up because they should update by themselves. Okay, maybe I missed something. Phoenix endpoint stop duration should be good. But here we also can get some database information. So this is hitting the database. So you see this stuff start to pop up. You know, what's it doing? It's querying to two seconds, or sorry, two milliseconds. Because they're in cache now, you can see it comes up right away. Let's see some information. Uh, not too sure why this one's not coming up, but this one usually I jumped around and it came up just fine. Uh, not too sure, but in any case, uh, I would like to dig some more into telemetry later on, uh, figure out why you know certain things are certain ways. But in any case, um, this is just a quick intro to how you can start getting some telemetry events within your app. So I think this is probably the most useful. Figure out how how much resources your app is using, and also figure out you know where some bottlenecks could be in your in your database. So this is Alan from Plangora. Please subscribe if you haven't. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks. Bye. Hi. Please feel free to ask us any questions about Elixir, Flutter, or anything else in programming. Here is our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We will answer your questions every Friday. Ya man tai, ge duk man all. Yo wen ti, ji da wen wo.